Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. He's helped me to transform, to be transformed into the image of God, which is God's purpose for my life. I have the faith now to be able to stand through anything that I go through. I know that I'm going to come out victorious on the other side because of what I've learned through this ministry. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to a special edition of The Gospel Truth. Again today, I'm going to be playing a teaching that I gave in Phoenix, Arizona during our Gospel Truth Conference in January of 2021. And I'm talking about how to stay positive in a negative world. We definitely are living in a negative world where all of the bad things are being amplified and the good things are being diminished, and you need this teaching. I think it'll really help you, and I just thought it was so good that I wanted to put it on our program. So watch this. At the end of the program, we'll come on and share with you about how you can receive this teaching that will help you stay positive in a negative world. You just need to come to a place that, God, I'm not smart enough to run my own life. I need you every moment of every day to show me what to do. I actually feel sorry for those of you who are very talented and gifted because, you know, you're tempted to try it on your own. I had a man come to me one time, and he, he was at one of my meetings, and he says, why is it that God only uses hicks from Texas to <laughs> preach the gospel? And he compared me to Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagin and some other people. And I wrote him back, and I said, it's because Hicks from Texas know they hadn't got a chance. They depend upon God. But other people who have these talents and abilities, they think, God, you just get me on the stage, and I can handle it from here. Man, that doesn't glorify God. God's not going to share His glory with another. But it, there is... I feel sorry for people that have all of these talents, and so therefore they're tempted to try it on their own. I don't have any talents. I honestly don't. And so it's easy for me to trust God. Man, when the Lord revealed himself to me, I didn't have any, you know, people say I had to give this up. I had to give that up. I had nothing to give up. I was going nowhere. I didn't know where I was going. I was looking for some direction. And so it was easy for me. I didn't have to give anything up. And so the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you, but you have to depend upon him. He's wanting to flow through you. Let me say it this way, that if your life isn't supernatural, it's superficial. If you can look at your life and say, I did this, it was my wisdom, I accomplished this, I've done this, then I can just nearly emphatically say you've missed God. If all you're doing is doing the things that you could do on your own might, you've missed God. God's going to call you to do something that's beyond yourself. I was an introvert, couldn't look at a person in the face and talk to him. And now I talk to millions of people every day. God called me to do things that I couldn't do because he wants you to depend upon him. And I mean, just, I'm going to have to go through some other scriptures. There's so much I'd love to say about all that. In the 14th verse, it says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. If you are just in your natural man, if you are trying to figure things out with your own head, then you cannot know God. You cannot be led by God just using your own intellect. Again, I'm not saying that you turn your intellect off and do foolish things, but you have to be led from your heart. It comes by revelation. And there's so few people that are willing to do this. Most people feel very qualified to run their own life. And yet, uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23 says, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. God has given us the choice whether we want to run our life. He won't force his will upon you, but the true decision is to say, God, I need you to direct my every step. I need the Holy Spirit. I need you to speak to me. 
That's what he's saying here, that you, the natural man, you just can't connect with God. The wisdom of God is considered foolishness to our mind. You've got to go beyond your mind. You've got to do things by the Spirit. You know, the Lord will lead you to do things. I bet you every person in here at some time or another has prayed about decisions you had to make. You had choices. And so you prayed about it. You thought about it. You asked God for wisdom. But all of the natural wisdom of the world told you to go in this direction, but you didn't feel right about it. But all of the council said this. So you did it. And as soon as you did it, things didn't work out. And you said, I knew I wasn't supposed to do that. I bet you every person in here has done something like that where you were forced, you felt like you were compelled to make a certain decision, but when you did it, you said, I, and it failed, you said, I knew I wasn't supposed to do that. How did you know? There wasn't any physical reason. It was the Holy Spirit speaking to you. He's communicating to you. And yet most of the time, we don't follow that inner leading of the Holy Spirit. Colossians 3.15, let the peace of God rule in your heart. The word rule there means umpire. Let it be the official, the umpire. Let the peace dominate you, not the wisdom of this world and not just physical circumstances and other things. And yet most people don't follow the peace that's in their heart. I got a great teaching on that three series that deal with that one thing. And he goes on to say in the 15th verse, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. That is one phenomenal statement. We have the mind of Christ. It's not up here. It's not talking about this brain. When you come to school, I can guarantee you most of you aren't going to make a hundred on every single thing. Some of you can't find your glasses when they're on top of your head. You do not have, a, you don't know all things right here, but in your spirit, your born again spirit, you have the mind of Christ. It says in Colossians 3 verse 10, put on the new man which has been renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You've got a mind in your born again spirit that is identical to Jesus. It's renewed in knowledge. First John chapter two, verse 20 says, you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Not some things, all things, all things. If, if words mean anything, that is phenomenal. You know everything. And yet most Christians go through life, well, further along, we'll know all about it. We just can't understand. <laughs> That's talking about with your brain, you may not know everything, but in your heart, you have perfect wisdom. There is never a situation that you've ever had presented to you that your spirit man doesn't know exactly what to do. There's some of you right now that are dealing with sickness and disease, but you know what? Your spirit man knows exactly how to release that life that's on the inside of you if you would let the Spirit dominate you. Some of you have financial decisions. You have decisions with people that you work with, businesses that you run, but we lean unto our own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. You aren't supposed to be figuring things out on your own. We're supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. This isn't meant to be an occasional thing just when you get your back against the wall or just for the super saint. This is meant to be for every single Christian. We are supposed to be led by the Spirit of God because in your spirit, you've got the mind of Christ You've been renewed in knowledge. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. And the Holy Spirit is sent to draw out and reveal Jesus, this mind of Christ to us. That's what Jesus said in the 14th chapter. So anyway, let me just end by saying this. And I'm not going to take time to turn to all of these verses, but 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, when you pray in an unknown tongue, your spirit prays. The part of you that has the mind of Christ, it's been renewed in knowledge, it has an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. When you pray in tongues, 
Your spirit is praying. The part of you that has this hidden wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, says that when you pray in an unknown tongue, you are praying the wisdom of God, the mysteries of God. And Paul said there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that he came not preaching in man's wisdom, but the wisdom of God in a mystery. Where did Paul get this wisdom? Paul wasn't one of the disciples of Jesus. And yet he had a revelation of God, the New Testament gospel. He wrote half of the books of the New Testament. It was so strong what he was saying that even Peter over in Peter, he said that our beloved brother Paul says these things, which it's hard to understand and people that are unlearned and unstable wrestle with as they do other scripture. Peter called Paul's writing scripture and Peter himself said, it's hard to understand what this man's saying. Peter spent three and a half years with Jesus and yet he struggled at Paul's revelation. How did Paul get this revelation? He went into the desert and according to his own testimony right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I speak in tongues more than you all. Here's the point I'm trying to get across. When you speak in tongues, your spirit prays. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. And what's it praying? It's praying the hidden wisdom of God. It's got the mind of Christ. It's releasing whatever wisdom it is that you need. And then it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 13, that if you pray in an unknown tongue, pray also that you may interpret. All you got to do is pray in tongues and say, God, what am I saying? How do I stay positive in a negative world? How do I deal with this problem? How do I deal with my finances? How do I solve this problem? Pray in tongues and ask God for an interpretation. And he'll give you wisdom. You know, we were in Colorado Springs and we were building a building. I had bought this building for $3.2 million and I took out a loan to uh, buy it. And then we had to have a $3.2 million renovation on it. And at the rate we had saved money, at the rate we had saved money, uh, I figured out that if I didn't take out a loan, I'd have been a hundred and something years old before I saved up enough money to come up with this $3.2 million. So we were going to take out a loan for this. And, uh, and so, so when I bought the building and took out a loan, they told me next week you'll get your construction loan. So next week, put it into next week. And for nine months, they kept saying next week, next week, next week. Finally, after nine months, they said, look, it's been so long since we did an appraisal. Let's do a new appraisal and just start the whole process over. And our ministry was struggling. We needed that space. And all I could see was another nine months of delay. And so I said, no way. I said, let me pray about it. So I took these scriptures and the things that I've been sharing with you and saying, Father, You've got an answer to this. And in my spirit, I've got the mind of Christ. I know that my spirit man knows what to do, but my brain doesn't know what to do. I said, I need an answer. So I started walking on my trail and I didn't get any further than from that wall over there to this wall on my trail. And I started praying in tongues and asked for an interpretation and God brought back to my remembrance the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance whatsoever Jesus has spoken to you, John 14, 26. And he brought back to my remembrance a prophecy that says that you don't need a bank to finance all of these things I'm asking you to do. And I remember when this guy was prophesying to me, I thought, I don't need a bank? Why? And, it, and the next phrase went on to say, because your partners are your bank. Your partners will finance anything you can believe God to do. And so I was asking for an interpretation and all of a sudden this just came to me about your partners are your bank. And I said, Lord, is that the answer? Was I not supposed to take out a loan? Am I supposed to come up with $3.2 million? And like I said, I figured out at the rate we had been saving, I'd have been well 120 years old or something like that before we would have gotten $3.2 million. So I prayed about it for a day or two just to check things out and make sure this was the Lord. But finally, I was convinced that was the Lord. And so I went in and told my manager, I said, look, if they come back tomorrow and offer us all of the money we want, I'm turning it down. We're going to do this debt free. I'm not going into debt. And sure enough, the next day, a different uh, a bank that we had contacted in the past came to us and said, we've now approved you for $4 million dollars. 
And I told them, you're too late. I turned them down. And did you know in 14 months, we had that $3.2 million. And that was back in 2004. And in 2009, we bought the place where we are now. And we started building in 2012. And since 2012, in the last eight years, we've now accumulated $130 million worth of buildings and assets with $16 million worth of debt, which I hadn't got time to explain it to you, but it was a mistake. And I'm getting out of debt quickly. Amen. But I'm saying all of this happened because... I believe that God had, I had the mind of Christ and the Holy Spirit was sent to reveal it. And when you pray in tongues, all you got to do is pray and then ask God for an interpretation. And it doesn't necessarily come like you pray in English and then you stop and interpret in, I mean, you pray in tongues and then you interpret in English. If you're in church service, that's what you've got to do so that other people can benefit. But if you're by yourself, all you got to do is just get understanding. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. You, you're praying in tongues. It's your spirit praying, but your understanding is unfruitful. All you've got to do is just start understanding. And so if you're by yourself, just pray in tongues and trust God that he's going to guide your thoughts and lead you to things. There is a balance to this. You don't take the first thought that comes to your mind. Like, I think it's time for me to have a new wife. That's not God. <laughs> it has to match up with the word of God. Everything has to confirm to the word. So there's some more to it than this, but the point I'm trying to get across is that the Holy Spirit is given to us to make you look good, to empower you, to enable you to do things beyond yourself. And sad to say, very, very few Christians and very few spirit-filled Christians literally depend upon the Holy Spirit to guide them. If you're going to stay positive in a negative world, if you're going to be one of those that your heart does not wax cold, you're going to have to start having a relationship with the Holy Spirit, depending upon the Holy Spirit, trusting Him to speak to you, getting to where you hear that still small voice and you don't ever violate the peace of God in your heart. It's, you're going to have to develop a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit if you are going to prevail in hard times. And again, I know I'm speaking to spirit-filled people primarily, but uh, I've talked to a lot of you. I've had a lot of you come up and ask me questions and ask me to pray for you. And I can guarantee you the reason you're in the mess you're in is because you're doing things your own way. There's some times that I actually have to bite my lip to keep from saying, how could you get in such a mess? It's because we lean under our own understanding. I tell you, brothers and sisters, you just, we're crazy on our own. All you got to do is open your eyes and look around and see the weird things that people are doing. You're just crazy without the Lord. You're just dumber than a hammer. And even if you aren't doped up, you're just marginally better on your own, amen. <laughs> You need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to instruct us. <laughs> Praise God. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come and just give us a fresh revelation of who you are and how you want to bless us, how you want to teach us all things and lead us into all truth and bring all things to our remembrance Father, I pray that people in here today just get hungry to let you have more control, to yield themselves to you. Thank you, Jesus. And brothers and sisters, the Lord speaking to me right now that there are some of you that received the baptism of the Holy Spirit because it was preached to you and you came forward and you prayed and you spoke in tongues, and I'm not saying that you don't have the Holy Spirit, but you didn't understand the depth of what God wanted to do. You got the speaking in tongues and think, man, I've got it. <laughs> well, that's wonderful, and it's a big part of it, but man, it's so much more. The Holy Spirit, He is a person. He's not just a concept. Did you know I saw a Barna survey and that the majority of evangelical Christians believe that the Holy Spirit is not a person, but a force? 
And yet the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is a person. It's a part of the Godhead. He needs to become a friend. You need to get to where you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He's always there. But man, we just leave him unemployed most of the time. He doesn't have much to do in our lives. The Holy Spirit wants to have you. He wants to control you. Man, you need to come to the end of yourself. When Dennis was giving his testimony today about how he got born again and realized he was headed down a road he didn't want to go and he had to start seeking God, he realized his life was on a collision course with destruction. Every one of us is like that. It may not be as obvious as heroin, but doing your own thing is wrong. To go through 50, 60, 70, 80 years and have done your own thing, and leave this world and never have reached your full potential, never seen God's will for your life come to pass. It's tragic. Man, if you aren't living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. You need to be out there. God's got great exploits for every one of us, and most of us are just doing things our own way. I promise you, when you turn yourself over to the Holy Spirit, I'm convinced, brothers, some people think I'm trashing myself. That's not what I mean. But I, God didn't choose me because of my great talents or abilities. God chose me because I was available. And yet God has done things in my life that are absolutely phenomenal. I've seen, I've seen wonderful things happen. It's awesome. And I'm convinced that I'm not an exception, that this God is looking. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong in behalf of those who are perfect in his sight. Perfect there doesn't mean you're sinless. I think it's the NIV says those that are totally his. It's just talking about people that are depending upon him. He's here today looking and to say, is, is there anybody who will receive what Andrew's saying and quit doing things their own way and start depending upon the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit control them. He's here looking. You know, your response ought to be, God, don't look any further. Here am I. Man, you need to be opening up your heart. You need to be receiving this. And I can promise you, if you would do that, God will make your life awesome. He'll make it greater than you could have, your plans could have ever been. He never made a piece of junk. God's never made a dud. He never made anybody to just go through life sick or poor or hurt or bitter. If any of those things describe you, that's, you aren't living in God's best. But it depends upon you yielding to God, turning your life over. So you may already be born again. You may already be baptized in the Holy Spirit. But you aren't letting the Holy Spirit control you. Back when I received the baptism, uh, Dennis was talking about the Jesus people movement. I was during that charismatic movement in the 60s and 70s. And this was the whole thrust of everything is letting the Holy Spirit just literally dominate you. And speaking in tongues was part of it. But the main thing was all about turning your life over to the Holy Spirit. And man, we saw... When people got the Holy Spirit, it was life changing because they weren't just asking for the ability to speak in tongues. They were wanting the Holy Spirit to take control of their life. And there's a lot of spirit filled people today that have never, that's never been a part of it, but it needs to be. You need to depend upon the Holy Spirit. Today you saw a portion of Andrew's teaching titled, How to Stay Positive in a Negative World, recorded live from the Phoenix Gospel Truth Conference in 2021. This product that we're offering on how to stay positive in a negative world is something that you need. I can guarantee you we need to guard our hearts against this or our love will wax cold. So I've got DVDs that were taken from the conference in Phoenix. I've got CDs where it's the audio teaching of that. And this is just my teaching on how to stay positive. But then we have these CDs, DVDs, and a USB that is the entire conference. And I had Dennis Burke with me who taught three messages with my four messages. You could get the entire conference 
And so we've got multiple ways for you to get the entire conference or just my teaching on how to stay positive in a negative world. Listen to our announcer as he gives you all of the details. This complete teaching is available as a CD or DVD album. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website at awmi.net. Also available today is the entire 2021 Phoenix Gospel Truth Conference, which includes sessions from Andrew as well as Dennis Burke. This entire conference is available as a CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of just $49 when you contact us. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In April, Andrew will be hosting a special Easter season production titled God With Us in Woodland Park, Colorado. God With Us is the original love story of a passionate God on a relentless quest to rescue his people. Also in April, Andrew will be in Woodland Park to host the annual Karis Bible College Campus Days. In May, come to Karis Bible College for the Kingdom Foundations Conference with speakers Andrew Womack, Randy Clark, and Pastor Bill Johnson of Bethel Church. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. You know, the Lord has given me a huge vision and we've been blessed up to this point, but I've still got so much that God's leading me to do. I'm believing God for 10,000 new partners. We've already got over $120 million worth of buildings in just the last nine years, but I've got at least $100 million worth, maybe $200 million worth of buildings still in my heart for our students, for an activity center. We've got a new student housing that we've got a preliminary drawing of that is showing you a little idea of what it would look like. This one would house about 120 people. Our others are gonna be smaller with maybe somewhere around 40 people per dorm, but we need this student housing and we need people to become partners. I'm believing for 10,000 new partners. I would ask you to pray about it, and if the Lord says so, join with us and help us change people's lives through Karis Bible College. You know, social media has become a big thing in most people's lives, but sad to say, a lot of it is really negative. Well, we've got some positive social media. I would like to encourage you to check out our social media, all of these different platforms. We've got a lot of good news to share, so check it out, our social media for Andrew Womack Ministries.